Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, rendering. This is part one of the tutorial. Now, the weirdest thing about rendering, the thing that threw me and will probably throw you right off the bat, is that you would expect it, uh, expect to be able to choose the location your images go to. In this little window right here, the render settings. That's this little clapboard with the two dots. Uh, especially in the common tab, uh, where you can see the image format, um, the uh, frame range, and um, the size, and which camera is being rendered, and all that stuff. And yet, uh, it doesn't exist here. Uh, I find this is very strange and disconcerting, since uh, I think everybody's first priority is to get an image out of Maya. Um, otherwise, you're just playing around in Maya. You want to make something that ends up being something that people see. And the reason, I won't say the reason, um, the way you work this is that you have to tell, um, you have to choose a content directory. You have to tell Maya where everything comes from and where everything goes. And so the first thing you have to do in order to render an image out of Maya is tell it where it's going to go. So you pull down File to Project to either New or Set. Let's just say New. Let's say we have to make a brand new one. Okay. So let's call our project. Uh, well, first choose the location. In this case, I'm just going to go to the desktop and choose the desktop. And there we go. We have the whole path right there. The project, and I'm going to call it Bouncing, Bouncing Cylinder. CYL. Now, Maya will populate a whole bunch of folders with the correct uh, names and stuff if you if you let it. And to do that, all you have to do is click on uh, Use Defaults, and it will name all these folders correctly. And now it's going to make all those folders when you click on Accept. Just to double check, I'm going to go to my desktop, and um, let's see. Uh, what did I call it? Bouncing cylinder. There is everything. There's all my folders and everything. Now this is extremely important because when you're making a project from which from which you want to retrieve image maps and to which you want to put in rendered images, you uh, when you make a project you will get all of these these folders and these are the folders that Maya expects to put things into and take things out of. In other words, source images is where your um, your placed images, your image maps will come from, where you should put them if the, you want them to show up in your scene. And images, uh, great misnomer if you, if you ask me, is where your rendered frames will go. It should be called frames if you ask me. So now this is all set up. Let's double check and make sure that that is going to happen by going to, in Maya, File, Project, Set, and choosing this folder, Bouncing Cylinder, and saying Choose. OK. So now you can be sure that when you render, your images will go there. So that is step one. Uh, after you do this, I highly suggest that you save your, your scene file as and whatever it is, put it into the scenes folder of the uh, project that you just made. There we go. So that is the very first thing you have to do if you want a sequence of images to render out of Maya. And I do say sequence of images because you never want to render out a QuickTime movie. Um, let's just choose the format format up here. Let's see, is it QuickTime? QuickTime Movie is available here, but the problem with the QuickTime Movie is, and I'm not going to do anything on screen here, I'm just going to talk about this, is that if you are rendering a whole animation, say overnight, and there's a power outage, and let's say your render got up to frame 2,999 of 3,000 frames, and zzz, the power goes out, all of your rendering time will be garbage. That file will not be a complete file. It won't be able to open up and play. But if you render out a sequence of images, then all of those images that we're able to render will be just fine because they are started and completed one at a time. So always, always, always render out a sequence of images. So let's start out in the uh, render uh, settings right here and go through a couple of these settings. Um, at the very top in the common tab. Now, you can render using a, a multiple uh, different um, rendering engines that come with uh, Maya. 
um, they will always have the common tab, and the common tab will always look identical. So let's just go through that. So at the very, at very top, name, uh, name um, prefix, prefix. Um, that's basically the name of your file. So if you don't want to name the file, what uh, name the rendered images, what you name the file, uh, type in your new name right there. Next is image format. Now, there's a couple... Um, couple ways you can go with this. You can render out uh, uh, images, separate images, without an alpha channel. That would be a format like a JPEG, which only has three channels. Or you can render out um, in a format that will, that will give you an alpha channel, like a PSD or, or a TIFF or a Targa. Now what the alpha channel is for is, um, well, what it will make for you, here, I'll just do a render right now, and I'll show you an alpha channel. Okay, there's a plain old render. Click on this button, and that'll show you the alpha channel. What that's showing you is um, is areas of geometry and no geometry. Now, if I composite this, if I bring this image into a compositing program, let's say I want this cylinder to float around on a background of clouds, automatically, at least in After Effects, this alpha channel will cause this uh, image, it will cause everything that is black to get knocked out and you will only see the cylinder and not the background. You'll see the background image that you put behind it. It'll get not the background in your rendered image will be knocked out, which is exactly what you want. You want to composite this image on top of something else. And it's very convenient. And whatever it is, whatever um, view you're rendering from, let me just zoom out there and do another render. Let's see, render, render perspective. There we go. Doesn't matter what view you're rendering from, you're always going to get an alpha channel that the program is going to do its best to best to base on the geometry of your of your object. Now you can uh, zoom in and then you'll see all this crappy anti-aliasing here. Um, it's doing its best to make these lines straight based on interpre interpretation based on pixels, which is what a rendered image virtually always has to be. Okay. So, uh, that said, um, I like to choose uh, formats almost always with, uh, with an alpha channel. And again, Targa, Targa TGA, TIFF, um, but I like to go with Photoshop because everybody likes Photoshop. Okay, the next um, um, field here is frame padding. And what that means is, that's, that's the, actually the next field is the name. Okay, so right now, automatically it's set to name, extension, and number. Um, let's see. Actually, it automatically sets to single frame, and you have to change this because it's only otherwise it's only going to render one frame. So here you have a bunch of different options for naming. Now, if it's just name um, ex, uh, name dot uh, number dot extension, I, I f am afraid that in some circumstances that middle dot will be treated like an extension in some programs. So it always worries me to have two dots in a file name. So I like to avoid any more than one dot that is the dot right before the file extension. So again, the next uh, version has is even worse, has the uh, extension and then the frame number. That means that literally most programs you try and bring this in won't even read the file because it won't have a, a normal extension at the end of the name. Uh, name, uh, number, uh, uh, dot, <laughs> not even a file extension for that one. And here we go. Here we're getting into something a little more reasonable. Name, number, uh, file extension. And that would work just, for, just fine. But we have some other good options here that allow us to read this file much more easily on the desktop or wherever it is. Uh, and this is my favorite right here. Name, underscore, uh, number, dot extension. So you have the extension with the dot in front of it. You need that. But here you got a nice space between the name and the number. And that number sign means that whatever the number of the frame is, that number is going to go in there sequentially. Okay, so frame padding refers to basically the number of zeros that go in front of the number. So let's say you're rendering 99 frames. Frame padding means that um, Every, every frame that you render will have a single zero in front of it up until you get to 100. So the first frame will be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And then you get to, actually I meant 11, or 10 rather, you get up to frame 10, then it's 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, you know, and 23, 44, whatever, all the way up to 99. Pr 
problem with that single frame pending is, is if as soon as you get to 100 and over, you then have uh, numbers with three digits in them. So that means that 99 of your images will have only two digits and all the rest will have three digits. And some programs don't like that, will kick that right back out or simply not even read the images with the two digits in it. So just a rule of thumb, if your 